So today we're going to talk about electromagnetism and what you need to know about it at the GCSE level. So getting things started, we're going to have a look at the grip rules. So you're going to need these rules to determine in which direction things like current and magnetic field are flowing through uh, wires. So the first one is the right hand grip rule for straight wires. And this basically just says that if we have any wire with a current going through it, if we point our thumb in the direction of the wire, our right thumb, obviously, our fingers are then going to wrap around this wire pointing in the direction of the current. So in this example below, our fingers are going to tell us that the current is going this way. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we can also use this rule for a solenoid. So if instead of having one single wire we have, or, or a coil for that matter, say this is our coil, we know that the current is going that way. If we then point our fingers in the direction of that current, we know that the field in this coil is going that way. So we know this is north and that's south. Another really important rule you're going to need to know is again for diagrams, uh, you're often going to have 2D diagrams in your exam and you're going to see wires that have a cross in them and wires that have a dot in them. And essentially what the cross means is that the wire, uh, the current in the wire is flowing away from you or into the page and the dot means the, flowing, the uh, current is flowing out. So now moving on to Fleming's rules, uh, do not confuse these rules with each other or the right hand rule with the right hand grip rule as they are different. Uh, that's obviously gonna cost you marks in an exam, but I'm sure if you revise this enough, you're not gonna make that kind of mistake. So both of the rules um, work in a similar way. Essentially what they say is that your thumb is now gonna stand for the direction of any force. Your index is gonna stand for the direction of any magnetic field. And then your middle finger is gonna stand for the direction of the current. And we can use the right hand rule to determine these things for the generator. Uh, an easy way to remember which uh, to use in which case is that the right hand rule is for generators with an R. Do not confuse this with each other. Obviously the orientation between them is flipped, so you don't wanna make that mistake. And then the left hand rule is for motors. Uh, I won't go through again what each thing stands for as they're the same. So just to make sure that you understand these rules well and can apply them, here's a few examples. So I'm just gonna give you a moment. You can pause the video and have a go. So if you've had a go at these examples, hopefully you got the following answers. So for the first one, we're told to label the direction of the force. So seeing as we know uh, the magnetic field's direction and the current's direction, we're gonna be using our left hand rule for motors. We're gonna point our index finger from left to right. That's the direction of our magnetic field. And then we're gonna point our middle finger downwards. That's the direction of the current. So that's gonna tell us that the current, uh, sorry, the force here is acting out of the page. For the second problem, uh, we're told the direction of the force with the blue arrows, and we know the direction of the magnetic field. Obviously, the magnets are labeled, but we do not know the direction of the current. So this time, we're gonna use our right-hand rule for generators. I'm just gonna look at the right-hand side of the coil. The force is going down, so I'm gonna point my thumb down, and the magnetic field is going from left to right. So my middle finger is gonna tell me that the, for, uh, the, the current, sorry, on the right-hand side of the coil is going towards me meaning that on the left-hand side, it's going away from me. So that's that for the rules. Moving on to uh, what electromagnets are. So what you need to know at the GCSE level is that uh, when current is flowing through a wire, a, a magnetic field will be created around that wire. You can determine the direction with the rules as described. A common question you're gonna get is how you strengthen the magnetic field or you improve uh, the electromagnet. And the reasons for that are the following. So you can wrap your solenoid. So this is a solenoid over here. Solenoid is simply an extended wire coil, like a spiral wrap of a wire. You're often gonna see this, uh, you're gonna see this a lot in uh, electromagnetism related problems. But you can wrap your um, solenoid multiple times. You can increase the number of turns in it. You can also wrap your uh, coil around a soft iron core. Uh, soft iron core just refers to a rod or any kind of fitting shape made of iron, which is a magnetically soft material. And the third reason, uh, the third way is by increasing the current. Uh, advantages of electromagnets, another common question you might get asked are the following. Uh, electromagnets obviously can be turned on and off as they are dependent on there being current in the circuit. 
uh, they have a variable strength of their magnetic field. Obviously, you can vary the strength uh, by adding or removing a soft iron core or increasing the turns, but the most common method to vary the strength within a circuit is obviously altering with the, uh, the current, which is something we can do much more easily. And thirdly, you can reverse the polarity of the magnet. So if for whatever reason your system requires the north pole to become south, you can do that with a, uh, an electromagnet, something which you cannot do with a bar magnet. So now moving on to the first applied um, applied side of the electromagnetism topic, the motor effect. So I've written FLHR on the top right because for the motor effect we're going to be using Fleming's left hand rule and that one only. So the motor effect states that if we place um, a wire coil or a straight wire with a current in it in a magnetic field, the interaction between the magnetic field uh, of the magnets and the magnetic field of the wire will result in a force acting on this wire and the direction of the force can be determined with the left hand rule. If you're ever asked to state with words what the left hand rule describes you need to know that essentially uh, the force acting on the wire is going to be at a right angle or 90 degrees to both the direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field. But the more common way of harnessing this phenomena is instead of using a straight wire, using a wire coil as shown over here. So obviously if we use a wire coil, using our left hand rule we can tell that on the left hand side we're going to have a force going up. And on the right hand side, uh, this is specifically for this example, we're going to have a force going down. So at first glance you're obviously going to think, well, you can have the coil rotate, which you can because the forces are opposing. But that isn't quite the case, and I'm going to get to that right now. So, if you look at the diagram carefully, you will see that obviously there are opposing forces, and you'd think that the the coil would fully rotate clockwise, completing uh, complete 360 degree turns. But that isn't the case. The reason for that is because once the coil completes 180 degrees. The, um, the direction of the current isn't going to reverse. That means that we're going to end up, from going to that diagram, we're going to end up with something that looks something like this. That's bad. So this is going to be your coil. The left hand side is now going to have current going that way and the right hand side current going this way. Now if we apply Fleming's rules, uh, Fleming's left hand rule, we'll see that this time the force on the left is going to go down and the force on the right is going to go up. So yes, these are opposing forces, but they're opposite to what we had before. And so instead of the coil continuing its path uh, on a full turn, it's actually going to stop halfway and turn the opposite way. So instead of completing a full turn, it's going to oscillate and we do not want that. So to fix this problem, what we use is a split ring commutator, which is this thing over here. So what the split ring commutator does is that at every half turn, each side of the coil, each end, uh, will switch the electrode that it's connected to. And by switching electrode, the direction of the current in the coil is going to reverse. And by doing so, we can maintain the direction of the current on each side constant, and therefore the direction of the force is constant. So uh, by reversing the forces, sorry, by reversing the current, we can keep the forces on each end reversed, but on each side, so each end of the coil, but the left side will always have a force going up and the right side will always have a force going down. And by doing so, we can have complete rotation. Another common thing you might bump into is how to improve the motor. Again, we're gonna look at fairly sim uh, similar points as I described previously. To improve the motor, we can increase the voltage supplied. Sometimes mark schemes will be picky and they'll want you to say increase the voltage and then consequently you'll get a greater current. Uh, so just to make sure that you don't lose marks in a silly way because of that, uh, try to remember to mention that you increase the voltage supplied to then uh, result in a greater current. You can use stronger magnets, increase the number of coils, we've already discussed this. And another way is by using curved magnets or shaped poles. So how does this work? Well, if we look at the coil, so if I draw some curved magnets, the coil is rotating, doesn't matter in which direction, but we can see that the direction, the, um, the motion is circular. So if we have curved poles at any given moment throughout this motion, we make sure that the coil is equidistant from any point along this, um, from any point from the magnet. And by doing so, we can make sure that the force 
uh, generated at any point along that wire is constant and so the rotation will be better. Then we move on to electromagnetic induction. So I've written Fleming's right hand rule or FRHR over here because that's the rule we're going to be applying here. So what we can do instead, uh, if instead of having um, an electrical current and a magnetic field to then create a force, what if we have a force, a magnetic field, and we want to get a current? Well, luckily enough, there's something called a generator which does just that. So if we pass a magnet through a solenoid, as shown in the diagram over here, what will happen is that even if the solenoid has no current to begin with, a voltage will be induced in this solenoid as the magnet passes through and the induction of the voltage will result in a current flowing through it if it's part of a complete circuit. Why does this happen? Well, this is due to the cutting of flux. Flux simply means magnetic field lines uh, by, the, uh, by the magnet. So we can apply this to create a generator, something which is used um, in so many examples in our modern day society. And again, we're going to use a similar configuration to that of the motor. So this time we see very familiar things. We see our coil, we see our magnets. And what we can do is that if we rotate this coil, we're going to have a current induced in the um, in the coil for the reasons stated previously. But we're going to have a similar problem to that of the motor, which is that at every half turn, something is going to happen. We're not going to get a current going in the same direction. So if we apply uh, Fleming's right hand rule, as we did for the motor, but with the left hand rule, we'll see that when this completes a half turn, so suppose this is the state of the coil at the half turn, the forces aren't going to reverse. If we have this, I don't know, on a wind uh, power plant, it's not like the wind is going to suddenly turn direction every half turn. So suppose we still have a force going up on the left and down on the right. If initially, so if we apply that same thing to this diagram and we use our right hand rule, we can tell that the current on the left is going that way and on the right is going towards us. But um, when the when this flips over, the sides of the coil haven't switched. So the current, so uh, the current on each end will be the same, but it will be sorry, the current on each end will reverse, but it will be connected to the same uh, electrodes. And because of that, we're going to result in an AC or alternating current output rather than DC. Now, oftentimes this isn't a problem as a lot of electrical appliances function off AC. But if for whatever reason we don't want AC, we can use a split ring commutator as we used for the motor. And what the split ring does is that every half turn, we switch the electrode that the wire is connected to. So when the current reverses, it also switches electrodes. So the direction of the current is kept constant and you get a DC output. Another thing to note is because the uh, the coil ends are constantly uh, reversing and flipping over each other to make sure that they maintain contact with the circuit, we use what's called sli uh, slip ring conductors or slip ring commutators or brushes. And essentially what these do is that the coil is allowed to move freely, but it maintains contact with the circuit. Again, I'll go through this quickly, but how do we improve a generator? We can use a larger coil, we can increase the number of turns, use stronger magnets, or turn the coil faster. Obviously, you turn the coil faster uh, through having a stronger force. So for a wind power plant, you know, have a stronger source of wind. So I hope everything throughout this PowerPoint was clear. I advise that as you go through it, you have the PowerPoint opened up uh, alongside. So if anything is, in, is unclear, you can just read over it briefly. Another thing to note for this topic specifically, unlike some other uh, physics GCSE topics, you're not going to be doing very many calculations. A lot of this topic is going to be uh, fact-based or knowledge-based. That's why I uh, made such an em emphasis on learning specific points so that you know exactly what to say and when. And that obviously will help your understanding of the topic itself. A lot of these things, once you get the gist of it, aren't too complicated. Uh, so thank you for watching and I hope that was... Um, that was a good introduction to GCSE electromagnetism.